Now, Lewis Hamilton has been the dominant force of the turbo hybrid era, winning six drivers' titles in the last nine seasons, but the latest two world championships have been won by Red Bull's Max Verstappen. The 2021 season produced an epic battle between Hamilton and Verstappen, the title race going all the way to the last lap of the season, but 2022 has not reproduced those scenes. New technical regulations for 2022 brought ground effect back into F1, with the breed of cars drastically different to those of the 17-21 era, in which Mercedes continued their domination from the early years of the turbo-hybrid engine formula. However, the team's W13 design has been off the pace in 2022 compared to the RB18 of Red Bull and the F175 of Ferrari, with the Silver Arrows in danger of a first winless season since 2011. The car was affected in the early stages by aerodynamic phenomenon known as porpoising, with it taking multiple races for new technical director Mike Elliott and his team to understand and rectify the problem. At the US Grand Prix last weekend, Hamilton led the race in the final third in what was his best shot at a win this season. The team looked closer to the pace but was still unable to match Verstappen. The Silver Arrows had brought upgrades to their floor and rear wing, however the substantial gap that they've had to their cars in front has remained the same after qualifying. Having started from third on the grid, Hamilton took the lead after Verstappen suffered a disastrous pit stop with a wheel gun problem that left him stationary for 11 seconds. Verstappen then had to pass the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc to chase down the British driver who was 6 seconds in front. Hamilton made a determined push to stay ahead but he was caught and passed by Verstappen in a quicker car and on quicker tyres 7 laps from the flag. Now, whether or not Mercedes can win one of the final three races has been a hot topic of discussion, but the seven-time world champion is not confident. We really need to be realistic. The Red Bull car has been the fastest car by far all year, and it's still the fastest car. If Charles was there, if Perez was there for example, it would have been a different race because they would have been ahead of us. We would have been on the third row. It was great to have started third and been in position to fight, but on true pace they've been ahead of us all weekend. They were on Sunday and they will be the next three races. So, unless something drastic happens to any more of them, then it's highly unlikely that we'll have the true pace to be able to compete with them. Now, the next race is in Mexico City and is followed by meetings in Brazil and Abu Dhabi. Rebel wrapped up the Constructors' Championship in Austin and every indication is that their car will be equally formidable at the final three meetings. Hamilton pointedly noted what little he could do against Verstappen at the USGP. He had an 11 second stop and he was behind Charles, that just shows how much pace they had in hand. To have got past Charles and to have caught up 6 seconds and pulled 3 seconds ahead of me at least, that shows some serious speed. With 3 races to go, it's 3 more chances for Hamilton to save his season from being his first ever winless one, for Mercedes to save their season from being winless for the first time since 2011 and for George Russell to earn his debut win. To be fair, Mercedes are almost there. For Hamilton, so near but yet so far last Sunday, he also had winning chances at Zandvoort and Silverstone. There have been several upgrades of late and that's surely a plus for the Brackley team. Team boss Toto Wolff has indicated that the car's DNA will change for 2023. Despite that, the W14 may look a lot like its predecessor from this season. Now the third place Mercedes currently holds among constructors is not enough for Wolff. I think the DNA of the car is going to change for next year, that's clear. The German team came up with a very special Zero Sidepod concept in the second week of testing in 2022. As the name suggests, there are almost no side pods present on the W13. Wall says the narrow car may return in 2023. It doesn't necessarily mean that our bodywork is going to look very different, but certainly, what is part of the DNA of the car, the architecture, will be changed for next year. Wolf said the W13 car was just too draggy overall, explaining why Hamilton was powerless to keep Verstappen back in the closing stages of the race in Austin. I think our car is just too draggy overall and it's something that we need to figure out for next year. Costa played a role. We can't just produce an infinite amount of low drag bits or spend a lot of time in the wind tunnel to come up with solutions, so it's for next year. Asked about Mercedes' chances in Mexico, Wolf said he would need to bite his tongue and avoid making any bold predictions, but that the conditions should aid Hamilton and Russell's chances. Mercedes has only scored one win in Mexico in the last five years, courtesy of Hamilton in 2019. The track has typically favoured Red Bull more given its previous high downforce strength, with Verstappen winning in 2017, 2018 and 2021. Sometimes this year I've said we should be good at a particular track and we didn't perform and then the other way around. So on paper Mexico looks good, our draggy car should be effective in the thin air. It's good that it's coming next week so I hope we can give them a run for their money. 
Trikeside Engineering Director Andrew Shovlin confirmed that the team will run the front wing package that caused a stir at the last race in Austin. The front wing package raised eyebrows when it was displayed in the pit lane over the weekend, with questions being asked of its legality due to the winglets that connect to the flap element. Andrew Shoblin has now confirmed that it wasn't ran in Austin due to the team only having one specification of the wing and no spare. Instead of running the risk of it being damaged during qualifying and having to make a specification change in Park Fermi, which would have resulted in a grid drop, Mercedes elected to keep it on show in the pit lane. The reason we didn't run it in Austin was because we only had one of those parts, so if we damaged it during qualifying, it would have meant the car that damaged the wing had to start from the back. Also with a very busy program, we had the tyre test in FP2, we didn't actually have the time to evaluate. We have more of those parts available in Mexico, we will run that on the Friday, we will check if it's all working as expected, and the plan at this stage is to race that wing. Now the front wing was part of the last major upgrades brought by Mercedes for the W13, with technical director Mike Elliott saying that it exploits a key area of the regulations that are up for debate with the FIA. He revealed the FIA had questioned the intentions of the new design. The new wing comes with five fasteners which have become a point of contention. The team argues that the fastener's purpose is to hold the wing together, but there is an argument that they are positioned to direct airflow outwards. This is a system which the FIA tried to avoid in the new 2022 regulations and have raised their concerns over the German manufacturer's concept. I think there's fuss about it because in the regulations, it talks about the primary use being for mechanical or measurement purposes. Clearly there's a secondary benefit of an aerodynamic design that's in there as well. We'll decide whether we want to argue that one or not, it's actually not worth a huge amount. The detail looks interesting, but it's not the big thing on the front wing. So, do you think Mercedes' new front wing will bring better performances in Mexico, and do you think Hamilton can win any of the last three races? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.